this is it's, it's very interesting because I find this is an area that's very, very confusing for many patients. And they're not sure what type of dressing to use, why they're using that type of a dressing, why they have their dressing switched. I, I'd really like to start even before we talk about dressings, uh, the whole the whole theory of of putting something on your on your wound, right? When I was a kid and I got a cut, my mom said, "Well, just let air get to it, so that there's no problem, right? Let the air get to it; it'll heal quicker." For many people that have a, a foot wound that they just got a cut, it's it's a lot different than a cut anywhere else. It's a lot more prone to get an infection because it's on your foot, because it's in your shoe, and there's bacteria and fungus in your shoe. As well, uh, another problem with a, a foot ulcer or a wound is that it tends to be open for a longer period of time. The longer your foot wound is open, the more prone it is to get some type of an infection in it. And as well, a, a foot wound can have certain types of drainage on it, and so you don't want this just, just to get all around because it can dirty everything uh, around. How often should you be changing your foot wound dressing? Um, some wounds are, can be changed uh, once a day. Other ones can be changed every two or three days depending on the type of product that you're using. There's different types of classes of, of dressings. And I'm going to go through some of the, the most common types of classes. There are many different types. So if you, if you imagine, there's a number of different types of classes. And then within those types of classes, there's a specific types of products. And I'm not going to go into the exact type of products, but the different types of classes that are available. Uh, much similar way you can buy granola, right? If you're buying cereal, that's the class. And there's different types. There's Post, there's Kellogg, there's the store brand. They're all granola, but they're just different price levels and different types of marketing and advertising goes into them. So I'll start with uh, one of the most common ones that I use in the office. This is a hydrogel dressing. Here's an example of it. It tends to be moist. Uh, a hydrogel tends to be placed on a, on a foot wound that you want to keep keep moisture, uh, an ulcer that has a beefy granular base to it, and you're wanting to uh, keep it nice and nice and moist. That's what this one is for. Works very, very well. A, drain, uh, a draining wound doesn't work the best for this. All you do is you take a, a little piece of this and you place it right over the, the ulcer, and you put some gauze and some other type of a, a wrap around it. It's, it's important. This is the primary dressing, and then you have a secondary dressing that goes over the top, which tends to be usually some 4x4s four four or some type of a gauze and then some type of a wrap that goes around it. So this is something called a, a hydrogel a type of a dressing. Very, very effective for many types of foot wounds. Keeps a, 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 an optimal wound environment. What did we use before we had hydrogel? Or what do many doctors still use? They just take the gauze. This is gauze with hydrogel in it. If you take a normal gauze and you put saline or, or water on it, you can uh, put it in a dressing, in a wound, and then that's called a wet-to-dry dressing. That's initially how everything began. But as technology has evolved, wet-to-dry dressings really aren't the standard of care anymore. They, they tend to be good. They're helpful. Uh, what's specifically helpful is when you put them in the wound, then they dry out, and then you pull them out, it actually removes some of the bad tissue along with it. So it actually debrides it mechanically. It removes some of that tissue out. But it, it's not the standard of care. But if you are wanting to do a wet-to-dry dressing, if that's all you have is gauze, and some water. Do you, should you use water? Water can be used, but you tend to want to use something called saline. Uh, saline, you can actually buy saline or you can buy contact solution. Many times contact solution is a saline. You can just use that to clear up the wound to, to prevent any problems. Okay. So what I typically uh, tell my patients to do is they shower and, uh, and they use soap and water and kind of clean out the wound, assuming that that's the type of wound they can do that with. Dry it out well. Rinse it with saline and then put the dressing on. That's kind of the easiest way for someone to do that. Uh, the, the next is the, the second most common one that I use. This is called a, a silver dressing. As you can see, there's a this is kind of a, a long weaved one. And what this is used for, this is used for packing into a wound that's very deep. And if you have a hole, you kind of push it inside of that hole until you can't get any more in. It's for more of a deeper wound or a wound that's undermining. If you're just putting it on a wound on the top of it, this can be used then you would have to use the secondary dressing, right? The, the gauze and then the cling to go around the foot. This is a secondary type of a dressing. Now, when do you use a, a silver dressing? A silver is used because it has antibacterial properties to it. So if it's an infected wound, very, very good. This one's made out of alginate. Alginate's nothing more than seaweed, right? Uh, the good thing about seaweed, just like in the water, it, it, it absorbs a lot of liquid. 
And so this is very good for a, a draining a draining wound that, that's slightly uh, slightly infected or that you may be concerned about infection. This tends to be more of the, the standard of care now for uh, different types of draining wounds that, that tend to drain a little bit more. Uh, they don't work in very, very dry wounds. It works a little bit better in a wound that drains a little bit. Uh, also, in terms of the secondary dressings I was talking about, they do make uh, dressings that actually have the secondary dressing in place. So you have the, the, the silver, but you also have uh, another coat and some, some sticky adhesive. So this actually goes right over it, and that's all you need to do. So it, it saves one step uh, with this type of a sticky uh, dressing wound. So this is called an alginate uh, type, of a, type of a dressing. Next, we're going to look at uh, a foam dressing. This is a foam dressing. It actually has some stickiness to it as well. You stick it right on the wound. The nice thing about this foam, this one, if you put a cup of water on it, it'll absorb pretty much all the water. It's very, very absorbent. So this is, tends to be more for a leg ulcer or a foot ulcer that's draining a lot. And it gets all that absorption, pulls it away from the skin to not keep it too damp. The problem with a draining wound is that it, it gets the, the skin underneath it very, very wet. And that wetness can make the wound even be slower to heal. So you have to wick away all that wetness. Uh, one other type of, of, of dressing that can be used, if there's a lot of drainage as well, you can put um, it's foam, foam inside of it, and then hook a vac up to it. There's a number of different systems out there. But you put the vac, and the vac actually sucks away all the liquid, uh, if there's any bleeding, if there's any drainage. But as well, there's some types of properties and wounds that slow down the healing. It's all this drainage from it that needs to be removed. If you have this vac in there, it can actually suck away all of that and uh, help the wound to heal a lot quicker. That's uh, uh, the different types of wound vacs that can be used. Very, very effective in getting wounds uh, to heal quicker. Uh, one of the challenges, though, if someone has a lot of very good sensation in their wound, it may be painful when you're pulling it out, when you're putting it in. If someone's totally neuropathic and doesn't have any pain because of the neuropathy, very, very, very effective. Um, here's, a, here's an example of a colloid type of a dressing. Uh, this is one that can be used on, on different types of surfaces. Once again, it, it, it sticks, right? has this, this sticky material. And this is kind of like a, 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 a wound barrier. It's called a height, uh, kind of a colloid. It's, it's for ones that drain a little bit. And it also um, prevents tissue from getting too damp. It protects it. This is especially used on ulcers in the backside or in the back uh, to help prevent any types of macerations in there. It really, really protects the skin well and it, and it absorbs uh, effective. One of the newer dressings I'm just going to share with you, this is a, an actual a honey dressing. This is a, a Medi Honey. It's, a, it's, a, it's an alginate dressing, the, so the calcium alginate with the honey inside of it, and this can help uh, accept all the drainage. But as well, the honey has some uh, antibacterial and as well some wound healing properties to it. And then the, uh, the, the last type of dressing I'm going to go over is a dressing called a collagen dressing. Here's a dressing you have to put a little bit of water or a little saline on it, cut it to the wound, and put it in there. And this provides a, a structure for the wound to heal over the top of. This is for uh, a stalled wound, a wound that has uh, a lot of some type of a drainage, but it's stalled, it's just slow, and you're not sure why it's not healing. These are uh, some types of, uh, of um, these types of collagen dressings can be used. They can help with, with drainage, uh, and uh, you shouldn't be using this on a dry wound. You want a, a wound with a little bit of drainage. This is very, very effective. Uh, as well, in this section, I want to talk about wound dressings, but as well, different types of grafts. So what are the types of grafts that you can put on a wound? What is a graft? Graft is pretty much something that's not yours, or it may be yours, but taking skin from one area and putting it on another area. A wound that is open for a long period of time, many times a graft is the quickest way to get it to be healed. There are many different types of graft companies, and you can even take a graft from your own leg. If you take a portion of the skin, you remove it very, very thin, make little holes in it, and then you can sew it on the wound with a kind of a, uh, a nice a dressing. And this dressing usually incorporates some cotton balls, and some mineral oil to help keep it moisturized, and then a different types of dressing that doesn't adhere to it, and you push that on there. Or you can also use a vac on top of that, one of those vacuums that I was telling you, to help suck away all the moisture and help it to adhere and, and take. That's the hardest thing with a graft, is making it take. Another type of a graft that can be used, there's a couple of them out there. Uh, some of the three most common ones that I use, one is called Dermagraft, and this is made out of pig. And you can put this on the ulcer, and you put it on weekly, and that can help uh, it provides what it does. It, it kind of provides uh, uh, infrastructure, kind of like a skeleton. 
it provides the, the skeleton for the wound to heal on the, over the top of it. And it kind of degrades and incorporates into the skin and it heals over. Another, uh, another good one is, is Aplograft. Uh, very, very good one time, or you can use it a couple times. We tend to use it one time. And then um, also Graft Jacket. These are different types of grafts that are taken from different types of uh, animal, like uh, pig, pig type of uh, dressing. Um, they make it not from, in other ones, made from human fetal foreskins. That's the aplograft. And they're taken and they're, and they're put over different types of wounds. They can be put over tendons that are difficult to heal, a lot of different areas. But as well, you can take it from your own skin. So those are the types of, of grafts that, that can be used. But in closing, I want to talk to you. Um, uh, a really important point is that when you put different dressings on your foot wound, many people are wondering, well, what's the magic wound to get my, or wound dressing to get my wound to heal? And really, I wouldn't say that this isn't the step that's magic. The step that's magic is, the, is offloading and taking the pressure off the area. That's the most important. It doesn't matter what you put on a wound in terms of a dressing, but it more, it matters what you remove in terms of debriding the ulcer and also taking off the pressure. That's uh, the most important aspect in terms of, of wound healing. But this is just a quick review of some of the different types of uh, wound dressings that you can apply. Uh, and uh, there's also different types of, uh, we talked before, of uh, different types of creams and, and medications that you can put on the wound as well. Uh, there are different types that can actually debride, debride it enzy enzymatically with their different, different types of chemicals. One's made out of papaya. Papain urea, papaya, and that takes away all the dead tissue. You can also use larvae, which are maggots, maggot therapy, that can be used to remove some of the, the, the bad tissue in there as well. So there's different types of creams as well that can be used. They're not really the dressings, but they're more of the adjunctive therapies that can be used to remove all the bad tissue from the wound and help it to heal quicker. So I hope this uh, section, so just in review, we, we talked here about the different types of dressings and grafts. There's a number of types of dressings, but once again, it's not important always what dressing it is, but it's how you take the pressure off the wound that's most important.